Hi, I'm Glenn. And I'm Brent. And, and we're, we're the Penumbra, Penumbra Brothers. Brothers. We focus on, on you. Direct Square Law made simple with the Penumbra Brothers. This is also called the Exposure Maintenance Formula. So a couple things you need to know first, and this is similar to the presentation on the Inverse Square Law. Same things you need to be familiar with. You need to have a basic understanding of MA and time, source to image distance, and the divergent nature of radiation. Again, we'll give a very brief description of each. I'll also give an easy conversion for the most common distances used in radiology, which is 40 to 72 inches or to or from 100 to 180 centimeters. The plan is to ditch that clunky old direct square law formula that is filled with room for mistakes. So let's get started. First, MA in time. Mass is MA in time. MA is milliampers. Time is time. So MA is how hot the filament gets. Time is how long the filament stays hot. Together they are mass and they control thermionic emission or the amount of electrons that are available to produce radiation. And the SID, which is a source to image distance or the distance from the X-ray tube to the image receptor or the detector. The amount of distance you have greatly affects the amount of mass that you will need to use to maintain your exposure at those different distances. Divergence is from the source of the radiation moving out, the beam diverges or spreads out as it moves further. This does not affect the volume of radiation, but it does affect the concentration of radiation. Kind of like a flashlight. As you move further back, um, you can see less. It's not because there's less light, it's just less concentrated. So what is a direct square law used for? If you're changing distances for one reason or another, this can often be due to trauma or limited space in where you're working. This tells you how much you need to alter your mass to maintain your exposure. So the law states that to maintain exposure when changing distances, mass must be directly proportional to the square of the distance. Really clear, right? No problem. Well, let's look just a little bit deeper into that. So as you see on this graphic, at, we're going to make the assumption that at 40 inches from the x-ray tube we're producing 2 million photons and that is a 1 by 1 foot square. So if you move further back, say at the 72 inch example, we still have that 1 by foot by 1 foot square but it has a lot less radiation because as it shows in the yellow square, uh, the yellow highlighted square, there's still that two million photons. But in a one foot by one foot square, there's gonna be roughly a little over 600,000 photons. If you're changing distances by two, three, four, or even 80 times, it's pretty easy calculation. You just square the distance that you're multiplying it by and then multiply or divide your mass. Um, for those other distances, that's where the direct square law comes in. So one more way to think about it is if you are close enough to a source of light you can see because the light is concentrated. So you can see somebody that's relatively close to you. You haven't reduced the light, but if you move back further, kind of like this, you really can't see them as well because the light has diverged or spread out. So it's not because there's less light, it's simply because you're further away from the source. If you can't keep the light or the radiation to be as concentrated as it was at the beginning of the beam, so what do you do? You get a bigger flashlight um, or you use more mass. The old formula is, you can see here, again, we have to cross multiply um, and reduce a fraction and it's easy to make mistakes. So this is the old way. That was me when I still had hair. Uh, the new formula, it's very similar to the inverse square law in that it is direct, it goes straight through, you square your numbers, multiply and divide, that's it. We'll do a quick demonstration. Um, we'll eliminate the cross multiplying, inverting, and just getting rid of that confusing formula. Uh, when we're done, you'll be saying that was easy. So here's the new formula. Again, a very basic word problem. We're gonna say you had a technique of 15 mass at 70 kVp at 40 inches, and you're using that for a shoulder. Let's say for whatever reason, you need to take that image at 65 inches. What mass would you need to use to maintain your exposure 
at this increased distance. So first thing we're going to do is plug in our numbers. Once we have our numbers plugged in, then we just write the formula out, plug our numbers into the formula. So first step, plug in your numbers. Second step, square your distances. At step three, you either cross multiply or invert and multiply. One of the two either works. At the fourth step, you reduce your fraction. At the fifth step, then you isolate x. So in this case, we have x equals 39.6 or 40 mass. So we're going from 15 mass to 40 mass because we've changed from 40 inches to 65 inches. Again, a lot of inverting, multiplying, reducing fractions. So here's our new formula, as you can see. Same question, same information we're putting on the side there so you have your numbers. So we simply plug in our numbers and then we square our distances. We simply multiply and divide and we come up with 39.6 mass for our new exposure. Round up to 40. Because that was so cool, here's a cool dragon. All right, all right, that was more of a dorky dragon. So here's a cooler dragon. All right, so that's your cool dragon, so let's get back to work. The easy conversions for the most common distances, 40 and 72 inches, or if you're ever, any place other than the United States, um, 100 and 180 centimeters. So the shortcut is um, 3.24. Again, this only works going from 40 inches to 72 or from 72 to 40 inches. So the same thing does work with 100 and 180 centimeters, but the factor is 3.28. Everything else is exactly the same. Well, we already know that if we're doubling or having the distance or multiplying by three times the distance, we simply square that number and we multiply or divide depending on whether we're moving closer or further away from um, the source of radiation. So what about distances like 40 and 72? We just simply multiply or divide by 3.24. If your distance decreases, then your mass also has to decrease. So you divide by 3.24. If your distance increases, your mass also has to increase. So you simply multiply times 3.24. So let's make sure that works. Does 3.24 really work? Yes, yes it does. So let's give us real brief, um, simple word problem. Say we have 18 mass at 72 inches, what would you use at 40 inches? Um, so we're using our already proven easy formula. We just multiply it out and we come up with 5.55 or you round up to six mass. We have a shorter distance, so we decrease our mass, so we have to divide, right? So we take our original mass of 18, divide by 3.24, and we come up with 5.55 or six mass. Exact same number, simpler process. When going from 40 to 72 inches, exact same factor, you just multiply times 3.24. Super easy. So does this work at 100 and 180 centimeters going back and forth? Absolutely. So we're gonna take this basically the same formula. We have 18 mass at 180 centimeters. So what mass would we need to use at 100 centimeters? So our already proven formula, we throw that up there, we come up with 5.48 mass. So we're going from 180 centimeters to 100 centimeters. So we divide. We divide by 3.28, we come up with 5.48 mass. Same thing. If you are going from 180 to 100, you divide, so you divide by 3.28, and we come up with the exact same number. So that's a direct square law, simplified. It doesn't have to be complex or difficult. Just remember the formula you have up here, and then the quick conversion factors of 3.24 for inches and 3.28 for centimeters, moving from 40 to 72 inches or from 180 to 100 centimeters. And that's the direct square law, or the exposure maintenance formula made simple with Penumbra Brothers, where we focus on you.